Some Aston Martins here, starting off with a DB11. This one is the V12. And because there's also a V8 derivative of this, it's very hard to distinguish. So you really have to know your cars. Obviously, this one's got the V12 badge on the side right there. But another way to tell is with these four nostrils on the bonnet. So if it only has two nostrils, it's the V8. If it's got four nostrils, it's the V12. So this basically kickstarted Aston Martin's second century plan, um, where they wanted to revamp everything. DB11 being the pioneer of that. There have been three or four cars after it. We'll get to that in a, at a later moment. But this car replaced the DB9. There was no DB10 to be sold to the public because all the DB10 models were made for the James Bond film. Um, and they were collecting quite a lot of money. But anyway, this is a DB11. Replaced basically a spiritual successor to the DB9. And um, yeah, what a car it is. But unfortunately, this one ditched the nationally aspirated engine for a turbocharged, twin turbocharged engine actually. So it's a 5.2 liter twin turbocharged engine, 600 horsepower in this. Oh, absolutely amazing. It's Aston Martin's own engine. I love these wheels actually derived from the DB10. Those look absolutely amazing. And it's just a nice sleek design. Also a GT car. So meant to drive you on long distances, ferry you in utmost comfort and luxury. So, yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And I like one of the special features of this car also is it's got a little pop-up thing here. It's got a spoiler that's actually part of the car, but it pops up to create some sort of airflow that goes over it and creates a bit of downforce as well. So, really cool car. I believe Aston Martin's Aston Martin makes the most beautiful cars on this planet. Aston Martin cars are just unbelievable. And then moving on down the line to Another model in the second century plan of Aston Martin is this, the DBS Superleggera. I mean, just look at this. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a car that looks both aggressive and beautiful at the same time. Nothing beats this car, like, oh my goodness. So whereas the, whereas the DB11 has to make do with only 600 horsepower, 441 kilowatts, this takes it all the way to 725 PS, or 715 horsepower, that's roughly, a little over 500 kilowatts. That's that's insane for a car. I mean, just look at it. I love it. You've got this massive honeycomb grill, super big. It is massive. You've got the two nostrils over there. The DBS Superleggera. They revived the DBS name. There was a DBS before, around 2006, 2007, 2008, and then that was replaced by the Vanquish. The Vanquish now name has gone, but it's probably going to come back on another different iteration of an Aston Martin. But the DBS name came back with this. This this is this was my favorite car for the longest time. Like I would just look at it and go crazy. I'm just like, yes, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I mean, just look at it. Like I'm just looking at the front because it's just so aggressive and it looks so good. Like I mean, oh my gosh, it's insane. Um, anyway, actually, one of one of the key features of this car is the wheel design. Not the wheel design, the brake caliper was one of the biggest brake calipers to be ever fitted on an Aston Martin car. And in fact, in most, um, actually, probably the biggest in, you know, of all car manufacturers at that point when the car came out. And it's just, it's, it's insane. It's a more hardcore version um, of a DB11. It's a different car altogether um, in the way that it's, 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 it's created. It's, it's just, it's bonkers. It's just bonkers. And another important fact to note is because it's a British car with an Italian name, um, there was a joke. So the the competitor, well, somewhat of a competitor to the DBS Superleggera from a different brand, will be a Ferrari A12 Superfast. So because they were playing around with it, and the Brits, when Aston Martin came up with this, they were saying, if the Italians can call their car Superfast, an English name, then us, the English people, can call our car. Uh, our car can have an Italian name. So that's just a little. Uh, side note over there, but um, yeah, I absolutely love this car. It is insane and because it's so powerful and produces so much torque 900 Newton meters to be exact um, They created a whole new gearbox just for this car ZF uh, did the, the job and um, Yeah, and it's it's just it's just absolutely amazing. I love the frosted lights there and it just makes it look even a lot better you got the four exhaust pipes this carbon fiber in this particular example it just makes it stand out even more and i love it i love it look at there's a spoiler there's just fixed spoiler 
They're just fixed right at the back there. And if you have a look at the interior, I believe the cars are all locked at this point. But if we just have a sneak peek into there, we've got a nice thick um, steering wheel. I love paddles that are super big because I mean that means you can't you can always reach for them whatever steering wheel position you're holding. It's got the infotainment system from Mercedes uh, because of the Daimler uh, partnership. So um, yeah, amazing car, amazing car. Moving on from the DBS to the DB11 AMR. So where has so we have the DB11 over there, and this is the DB11 AMR. So it's got a slight bump in power, and actually I believe the DB11 AMR replaced the DB11. So now they're no longer producing just a DB11 V12. It's a DB11 V12 AMR. So as you can see, the full nostrils on the top that shows you that it is a V12 engine car. So 30 more horsepower, so now it produces 630 horsepower uh, as compared to the. DB11 600 horsepower which is 441 kilowatts and um, yeah it's it's absolutely insane like I love this color scheme Sh I believe this is chicane gray that's an Aston Martin color chicane gray it's it's slightly discreet it's 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 it's, it's not shouty but at the same time if you, to the trained eye you know what it is once you see it you will know what it is it's got carbon fiber here AMR badges all around AMR is Aston Martin's high performance division so BMW's M or Aston or um, Mercedes AMG so AMR is the um, powerhouse of Aston Martin and this is a pretty pretty cool example actually let's actually have a look on the inside the interior would you just look at that this forged carbon fiber right there you just see how cool that looks oh my gosh that is so nice I like it also has the Mercedes infotainment system absolutely amazing seats it's got the red interior with the black the seats have got the red stitching also that is a cool thing this doesn't have this, I don't think I don't believe this is carbon fiber roof but also a black chicane gray uh, type scheme it's got like satin they're not satin they're like charcoal wheels which is I hope the camera does actually show that well but it's not I hope it comes out very cleanly there but um yeah absolutely insane then we have a repeat. They did make a four-door version Aston Martin. I believe this was based on the on the DB9 actually. So this has been around for quite some time. The repeat, uh, six-liter V12, naturally aspirated, which is something Aston Martin is not doing anymore. So I feel like these cars, if you can scoop one of these, I think you've gotten yourself a collectible. There's the repeat is, and also a repeat AMR, which is actually limited. Oh my goodness, there's a chrome Audi R8. Yo. That's insane. Well, I just drove past this, but um, yeah, it looks like a chrome crew thing happening there. But um, yes, as I was saying, there's a repeat AMR, which only, I believe only 200 or so, 210 units were made. Six, six liter V12, well over 500 horsepower, if not 600 horsepower in those cars. And it was just an absolute hoot and a half. The car's been around for some time. The Rapide AMR actually stopped production on the Rapide. Um, there are plans of bringing some other models in the Aston Martin range, but um, that will probably come in the later stages. So I just want to go back to what I was saying about the second century plan. The DB11 was the first car in the second century plan, followed by the Aston Martin Vantage that we're going to see on the other side, and then DBS Superleggera, and then came the SUV. I'm not sure if there's any SUVs on the floor, but we might see it at some point. Here's another example of a DBS Superleger. I mean, just look at that. Look at how awesome this thing looks. Oh, I love this car. It is so beautiful. This one's got black on the outside with the tan interior with the DBS name embossed on the seats. It's a little bright. Um, I have a problem with that, uh, with the tan extending all over the um, the dash because obviously when the sun hits it, it's, uh, it's gonna be super reflective and that's not a very good look. But if a customer specced it that way, I'm guessing that's what they wanted. Um, it's got a carbon fiber scoop at the back here. So absolutely cool car. And so Daytona does not only do McLaren, Aston Martin, Rolls Royce and Pagani, the McLaren GT over there, right in there, somewhere in there, right there, um, that was actually the Pagani Bay, but there are no Paganis on the showroom floor today. Um, however, they also do other brands. They do, they sell other luxurious cars. We've got a Novitec uh, Lamborghini Aventador SV Roadster, which is one of 500 in the world. But there's no standard SV Roadster. As you can see, it looks like it's been lowered. It's got a body kit on it. Novitec has done some wizardry to it. <laughs> it's got a, look at how massive that front 
friend Splitter is. Oh my gosh. And it's all in carbon fiber. You've got the darkened black badges. Oh man, it's insane. Yo, this is crazy. One of 500 based on the first generation Lamborghini Aventador. Um, six and a half liter V12, naturally aspirated. 750 horsepower, four wheel drive. And it, look at it, it just looks absolutely stunning. They have they've gone to town with this spec, I, I kid you not. Look at these exhausts. Hey bro, what's happening? Go cool, man, good, good to see you. <laughs> just saying hi to one of the sales people here. But um, yeah, anyway, back to the Aventador. Um, I mean, would you let's look at that. I was showing you the exhaust, four tailpipes, all tuned. I, I do not want it, this car is super loud. It is super loud. All this is in carbon fiber. It's a nice stealth mode. I believe this is a proper, this is a proper Batman spec. This is this should be Batman's car. This really should be Batman's car. I mean, just look at it. My gosh, engine over there. There you have it. The massive six and a half liter naturally aspirated V12 with 750 horsepower. Can you believe that? 750. This is actually pretty insane. So I think well, there's obviously a newer um, limited edition Aventador that's out there for sale. Um, so this is the SV Roadster based on the first generation of Aventador. There's an Aventador S that came, uh, which was a facelift of the Aventador, and they made um, a, an even hardcore version of that car. Um, and yeah, in coupe form, they're limited to 900, and then in Roadster form, there's 800. But with this generation, they're limited to 500. So of those four, um, hardcore models, this one is the most rare. And I believe this could be the actually, although it's, it might have, it's outdated, it doesn't have the ALA system that's available in the SVJ Coupe and Roadster. Um, it's still very rare and I think the prices of this are still gonna skyrocket in future. The prices on this are gonna be absolutely amazing. It's gonna be eye-watering to say the least. And I think this car does not have a price tag. So unfortunately, I don't know how much it costs, but I would say anywhere in the ballpark of eight to 10 million, if not ah, 10, probably 12, I'll put it at 12. I'll say 12. <laughs> so yeah, that's a Lamborghini Aventador SV Roadster over there. Then we have a Bentley, which I believe somebody corrected me earlier, Barry Ferreira. So if you're watching, there you go. There's a shout out to you, brother man. Uh, I believe this is a Bentley Azure. I didn't look it up or anything like that because the coupe model of this particular car is the Brooklyn's. And I believe that one was limited to only 550 units. Uh, 6.75 liter twin turbocharged V8, roughly 500 odd horsepower. And it is just insane. I mean, you don't get to see these cars very often. So it's good to see one. It's got the monoblock wheels. You've got the flying B bonnet mascot over there. We've got the standard Bentley grille, obviously this coupe, uh, this convertible um, cabriolet was inspired by the Anage, the Bentley Anage that came before the Malsan um, came through. So really cool car, you don't get to see these very often. And then we have an, a Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 Eleanor. I believe this is a replica because this is right hand drive, but it still looks amazing. This car to some of you may know this from Gone in 60 Seconds, um, the car that uh, Nicolas Cage drove last and crashed it, uh, unfortunately. But um, yeah, this is a replica of that. Unfortunately, I do not know the specs of this, but you're looking at a V8, naturally aspirated, potentially a five liter displacement. And um, yeah, it actually is made to look like the, um, like the actual movie, like the actual movie car in Gone in 60 Seconds from the year 2000. Really cool car, I love this car. I think because of, I watched the movie, I was actually prompted to create my own list of 50 cars that I would like to own. So that's a bit of a story on that. And then we come back here, we have another DB11, really cool car. Very similar to what we saw back there. This is also a V12 car. Oh man, we should just look at it. Six liter V12. 441 kilowatts, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. And then we have the predecessor to the DBS Superleggera, and this is the Vanquish. I really liked the Vanquish, especially the Vanquish in S, guys. It was absolutely insane, I really loved it. Because it looks beautiful. I mean, look at all the cars that Aston Martin is making, or has made in the past. They have this, um, I'm not sure if Aston Martin is actually still using this mantra of power, beauty and soul because you still you see that in all their cars you see they are they are you know relatively powerful um, they are beautiful and oh my goodness when that v12 just bellows it just draws you in there is no going away so this is a vanquish it uh it uh 
wow, I just got, I just got, <laughs> I just went blank. <laughs> um, yeah, so Vanquish, obviously successor to the DBS, the initial one, DBS. That was there, run about 2006, 2007. Also featured in Casino Royale and all those films during that era. Um, that was succe um, succeeded by this, the Vanquish, which did duty from roughly 2012 all the way to like 2018 or thereabouts. So yeah, really cool car, six liter V12 as well, naturally aspirated. So we like that. And we have another example of a Vanquish just here. This one in a slightly darker color. I love this because the windows are open so you can get to see some of the quilting, the attention to detail in the interior. Oh, you've got the waterfall there because uh, of the way that it just shaped. It looks like a waterfall. And I like that when manufacturers take time to actually look into um, these things, they just, they name their cars after like things in nature and stuff like that, just the things around us, because it's not just a center console. They wanted to add character, a bit of poise, a bit of panache to it, and I like that, I like that. It's, it's, it shows how much the brand is trying to position itself in the market as a luxury car maker, automaker, and Aston Martin, I think they do it really well. I love their cars, their current cars, even some of their old models, they're really good, because they just, they look so good, they really look good. I'm falling. 